we would normally define destructive fishing in FAO as, as being related to two specific types of activity. Dynamite fishing or use, use of explosives and use of chemicals, both of which we know are very destructive to the habitats as well as toxic to the environment. So those two types of operations we would consider destructive. But in addition to that, if we use fishing gears or we use fishing practices inappropriately, for example, if we use a fishing gear in the wrong area, we can also be destructive. The destructive can be various types. It may be you, you end up um, catching too many juveniles and destroying the juveniles and, and, and throwing them away as discards. That's one type of destruction. It could be that you're fishing on very sensitive marine habitats, such as corals, soft corals and hard corals. Uh, if, you, if you were to, to go trawling over these areas, you could end up with those habitats being destroyed. So that's one type of uh, destructive uh, practice and destru destructive fishing. But it's not just related to trawls. Any gears that are used excessively or inappropriately can have a destructive uh, component to them. From our side, I think we, we clearly understand that we, we need to, to prohibit, and this is uh, the general uh, opinion of, 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 of FAO members, that we, we, we prohibit dynamite fishing and, and chemical uh, fishing. For the other types of gears, we need to look at what are the reasons why that gear is having an impact, a negative impact. What are the, can, we, can we modify the gear in some way? Uh, can, we, can we zone an area so that fishing boats don't go on to the most sensitive habitats? And I think if we start to look at coastal areas, coastal zoning, we start to put boats fishing where there are fish but there are not these fragile habitats, we can end up reducing that type of destructive uh, fishing. But also um, for gill netters and traps, we can also look at where are the most appropriate areas for those. Bycatch is very hard to define, but bycatch is more than turtles. Bycatch is, it's, uh, it can include turtles, sharks, seabirds, juvenile fish of our target species, and a range of other species. But rather than try and define what bycatch is, and, and when FAO was requested by its members to develop international uh, guidelines on bycatch management and reduction of discards, the conclusion which we came to was, it doesn't matter how you define it. What's important is, is that if, it's, if you catch it and the, and the amount of fish that you're catching is significant, you need to manage it. And that management may include uh, changing the gear types, introducing measures to, to close uh, fishing operations when those levels of bycatch get too high. But what, or there might be a whole suite of different measures, but clearly what's required are bycatch management plans and bycatch management actions. And this is going to involve national fisheries authorities trying to identify what the problems are what with, with bycatch, what are the levels of bycatch, what species. And based on those, uh, on, on, on those types of studies, then try to work out what is the most appropriate actions in order to ensure that those fisheries don't uh, result in any of those bycatch species becoming unsustainable. We need to ensure that whatever we do is sustainable and that means making sure that the management actions are, are appropriate to the fishery but also that the fishermen comply with the regulations and uh, actually abide by the rules to ensure that. Ghost fishing is when a fishing gear, when it's lost, abandoned or thrown away, continues to catch fish and other animals. In some instances that continued catching, let's be more clear, that continued killing of uh, fish and other animals can go on for many, many years. And so we are losing all, although we can't see it, and if we look at the ocean on the surface, it might look nice and blue with the sun shining, but underwater, all of those lost fishing gears, many of them are continuing to catch fish and other animals. And so ghost fishing is a particularly uh, nasty type of, uh, of, of loss of, of, of of, of equipment into the environment. It's nasty because it's plastics. When a lost net uh, is sitting underwater, fish will go into it, they will die, the crabs and other animals will get into it, the net all collapses, the crabs die, the net comes back up, the fish go in again, 
and that cycle is repeated. Other inquisitive animals such as uh, diving seabirds or uh, turtles or, 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 or other, other uh, animals may also be inquisitive and look around and also get tangled up. So it's a particularly nasty type of, uh, of, uh, of loss. We could overcome these problems with ghost fishing if we were to report lost gear and in many cases retrieve lost gear. That would be a very valuable exercise. And some countries have done this very successfully. At FAO we'd like to repeat that work and maybe take some of the, uh, the technologies that have been developed in some countries and move them to others so we can start to look at this, this concept of fishing ground cleanup.